Governor Baker has filed a bill that would allow certain unauthorized immigrants to be detained for action by the federal government. This follows a recent court ruling that any immigrant arrested would have the same right to be released as a criminal suspect posting bail. The governor says conditions specified in his bill would get more hardened criminals off the streets while maintaining the trust of immigrant communities. But the bill was quickly criticized by the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy, or MIRA, coalition. Tonight we hear from its director of communications, Marion Davis, uh, thank you very much for being with us, Marion. Thank you for having me. Before I talk about um, the state of uh, feelings, uh, I guess the anxiety among immigrants in Massachusetts right now. I think the feeling is like all across the state, people are really, really scared. And one of the things, one of the messages that have come across to all immigrants, and even not just the immigrants, but the children and grandchildren of immigrants, anybody who looks foreign, is that we're not welcome here. We're not wanted here. We're considered criminals. Uh, and that sends a very powerful message to people. And we've seen you know, people who are missing doctor's appointments, children who are not showing up at school because they're scared that their parents will be taken away. It's just the, the, the atmosphere of fear has completely permeated the state and our entire country. And I imagine, of course, some of this is coming from uh, maybe some of the local authorities, but, but this could be just the federal authorities themselves directly enforcing the law. Too, right? Yes. I mean, it, I, the thing is that, you know, there used to be a, actual priorities for enforcement of uh, immigration laws. Uh, being in this country without proper permission is not inherently a crime. It is a civil offense, uh, just like, you know, failing to pay your taxes or a variety of other things that we do that we, you know, have to be held accountable for, but that don't necessarily result in people having their lives ruined. And so this is... Um, so it used to be that people were only being, uh, under President Obama in the last couple of years, people were not being deported if they were found to be law-abiding citizens who just wanted to be here quietly and work. They were just being asked to report to ICE or things like that. But uh, now pretty much the order has come down from ICE that anybody, any undocumented immigrant that agents encounter will be picked up and put in deportation proceedings. So people have every you know, have accurate reasons to feel that they are going, that, that they're in danger. Well, of course, the, the recent court decision about people being released, this is one of the fundamental rights to habeas corpus here. You can't be locked up until you're proven guilty. So uh, right now, um, it seems to say that what if you get an immigrant who's done something minor and, and ought to be released and who has in his history or her history something really serious, um, but that's not pending. I mean, wouldn't that be a difficult case for, for them to, to actually keep that person locked up still? Well, we believe that the Constitution applies to all of us. And yeah, you shouldn't, you know, if you wouldn't be held um, indefinitely or, you know, even for 12 hours for, you know, after, if you haven't committed a crime or if you posted bail, then why should a person who is an undocumented immigrant? Or in this case, you have to, we have to be careful also because this isn't just applicable to undocumented immigrants. This is applicable to any immigrant who potentially could be subject to deportation. Uh, so this is a very large potential group of people. And, uh, and, and yes, it's, we feel that the Lund decision was a really good decision that upheld good criminal justice and immigration policy practices that just basically said criminal justice is on one side, immigration enforcement is on the other, let each one do their job and don't get them entangled. So in other words, if someone is picked up but they have a domestic violence uh, you know, crime on their record 10 years ago, let's say, could they still be held right now under the current law? Yes. Yes, and actually so could anybody who at some point was sentenced to more than 180 days in jail or anybody who was convicted of any felony whatsoever, which in Massachusetts, you know, felony, uh, felony larceny is just $250. Um, so there's a lot of people who could be caught up in this. 
This is BNN News, and we're talking with Marion Davis from the Mira Coalition. Uh, uh, Marion, this is a law that's not just about agencies controlled by the governor himself. This is about some of the local, maybe even county authorities, too? Yes, and that's another concern that we have, that what the governor has done is he has more or less adapted a policy that the state police were already following since last year, and he has now said it will now be state law that any police department that wishes can adopt this policy. And what we are concerned about is that that might encourage police departments that were perhaps reluctant to detain people because they were concerned about constitutional issues or anything else, they might now feel like the governor is encouraging us to go ahead and do this so we are, you know, we feel they, they, it might give them false confidence that this is appropriate. What about the uh, uh, the kind of trust that, that immigrants might have in, in authorities? I mean, I know right now uh, that's probably been shaken quite a bit, but at the same time, let's say somebody, uh, you know, they're being victimized, they need to tell the police about something, but they're reluctant to come forward. Do you see this law changing it that much? Well, technically, no. Technically, a crime victim or a witness would not be covered by this policy, but this, if, if police departments across our state were to adopt this policy, they would very much be seen as being, as collaborating actively and willingly and maybe eagerly with ICE because they don't have to do this. We know for a fact that these ICE detainers are voluntary. Even the U.S. attorney has accepted that in the Lund case. So choosing to go out of your way to hold somebody for ICE sends a message about how you feel about immigrants and whether they are criminals or a threat. Of course, on the other hand, uh, uh, your organization and, and many other advocates and faith leaders are backing uh, a Safe Communities Act. How would that change what's on the books right now, especially given the court ruling? Well, um, the, the Safe Communities Act would, uh, on detainers, the Safe Communities Act is completely aligned with what the Lund decision uh, said, which is basically, no, we do not detain people, period. However, the Safe Communities Act, that's not the only way that ICE can get to somebody. You know, um, another way that police, for example, even the state police right now, to my knowledge, are doing this, they continue to just make a courtesy call to ICE and say, hey, this guy is going to be released. Uh, you might want to come and pick him up. And under the Safe Communities Act, most of those notifications would not be allowed, but there is a very clear and distinct exception for serious violent felons because Nobody wants, you know, murderers out on the street. Of course, the other thing here, I think the larger picture is, is how much of a crime threat are immigrants across the board. We've heard a lot about this from the president, even just last week, uh, some lurid descriptions about things. But, but overall, I mean, how, how do immigrants stack up against the, the rest of the people in this country? The incarceration rate for documented immigrants is about half that of U.S. citizens, of native-born citizens. And for undocumented immigrants, once you take away immigration offenses, it is even lower than for documented immigrants. Because if you're in the country and you don't have papers, you're going to be extremely careful about what you do. And you're going to make sure not only not to commit the things that you and I might consider crimes, but, you know, mind your speed, just generally don't get in any kind of trouble. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Marion Davis from the Mira Coalition will have more news in just a moment.